It's time for reason. Why should we feel guilty for arresting you? Why should we be like, ah, you know what? You're okay. You're a chemist. You're a teacher. You're contributing to society. Let's just let it slide. Why? We have laws for a reason. And it makes no sense to me why we would just say, ah, you know what? We need to reform our immigration policy and it's just too stringent. We're just going to say rule of law. Hey, here's a window. Let's go ahead and throw it out there. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome into the Voice of Reason, broadcasting live out of the heart of the nation, right here in Wichita, Kansas, on the Big Talker KQAM, along simulcasting on KGBT TV, broadcasting all across the entire Mid America region on the Mid America Network. Welcome into the Voice of Reason. I am Andy Hoosier. It is an honor to have you along again today. It is a Wednesday morning. And we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It is the pre-pre-Friday celebration. Let's have a little fun today. What do you say? 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK. If you want to join in, we are open on social media. We are open on the Facebook Live. It is rocking and rolling. Leave a comment. Ask a question. Like it. Share it onto your own page. Let's spread that all over the place, baby, because we are the fastest growing show in the Mid-America region by far. 316-721-8255. Eight minutes past the hour, and welcome aboard. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gambled? You ever played poker? Do you ever sometimes bluff? Because, well, that's what you have to do to be able to stay in the game. You're running low on chips. You're not quite sure how you're going to stay in the game. And sometimes you just have to bluff. You just have to fake what you don't actually have. You go all in and hope that they don't call your bluff in that sense. Have you ever owned a business, trying to expand that business, and sometimes when you get pushed into the corner and you're not quite sure what to do, your options are either to shut down or to expand a little bit. You need to be growing all the time. And sometimes... You take that risk and you get a little bit into debt. You take out a loan. You open up a secondary store. You open up a secondary restaurant and you hope that it's going to be able to pay off because in the end, it's either going to make you or break you. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the results and the response of the uh, of the election last night in the state of Pennsylvania for the 18th congressional district. The Democrat coming up and winning as of right now by close to 600 votes, 113,000 for each one of them. Connor Lamb, the Democrat coming uh, coming out as the the victor, 113, 720 to 113079 as of this morning with a 0.3 percent difference. And the Democrat coming up. Now, this is the quote-unquote blue wave that's coming across the entire nation. This is the Democrat victory that everybody's talking about. This is what's going to make the Democrats show they have support, that Donald Trump is falling apart, that Donald Trump is crumbling, that his support is going to the wayside because everybody's up in arms. The fact that he's colluded with Russia, everybody's up in arms. The, the fact that he had an affair with a porn star, everybody's up in arms. The fact that he does not know what he's doing because he's walking around aimless in the middle of the White House with his robe on eating a bag of Cheetos. That's what we've heard of the media, and now we see the blue wave that's happening in Pennsylvania with the 18th Congressional District. Now, looking historically, yeah, the Democrats be, was able to swing a seat. The Democrats were able to do something here. Looking historically, 2012, Tim Murphy, the Republican, won that seat with 64 to 36% of the vote, 216,000 to 122,000. Tim Murphy won again uncontested in 2014 for his re-election. Tim Murphy again, 2018, or I'm sorry, 2016, won again, 100% of the vote uncontested. This one, a little bit different. Rick Saccone, a brand new Republican against Connor Lamb, a Democrat, 111-112 across the board for both of the candidates. Now, 111,000, 111,000, if you... Look in the history of this district. We have to look at this and understand all of it. We can't just say, here's the blue wave, baby. Let's actually make it happen. 111,000, 112,000 that each candidate won. Going back to 2012, Larry Magi, or Larry Maggie, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, the Democrat, losing with only 36% of the vote, got 122,000 votes. This was a special election. It was an extremely low turnout, and the Democrats are claiming victory. 
They're saying that this is going to be the big blue wave that's going to start the mass turnover of different seats all across the nation. They received less votes last night than what Larry Magi did back in 2012 against Tim Murphy when Tim Murphy won 120 or I'm sorry, 220,000 votes. Larry Magi won 120,000 votes, 122 to be exact. They got 112 each of them last night. There was an extremely low turnout. But yet we're going to claim victory? We're going to claim victory? Back in 2016 for the re-election of Tim Murphy, there were 293,000 votes for him as an uncontested candidate in the Republican side. Almost 300,000. Less than half of that showed up last night for one individual candidate. And we're going to claim victory. We're going to claim the blue wave is changing the tide, that the blue wave's happening. The Democrats gain one more seat in the House, which they got a ways to go to even even actually matter in the House. But they won one more seat, which means it's going to be a big sweep of the blue wave across this entire nation in this fall. This is what we're up against, ladies and gentlemen. We have to understand the history of these seats. We have to understand the election of these seats. We have to understand what's actually going on in these specific districts and what predominantly has happened in these districts before. Now, it is a bit of a shock. In that sense, I guess if you want to call it that, where the last two elections for this House district was uncontested for a Republican. And the last time we did have a a Democrat opponent was in 2012. But they received a heck of a lot more votes than what they did this time. The activists, the rabble rousers, the ones that are fired up, the ones that are ready to make a difference, there are so few of them. And that's what we've been saying on the show for a long time. There are so few of them that we cannot listen to the media. We cannot listen to these crazy fringe left wing socialist activists who are wanting. And by the way. Connor Lamb, they try and claim him off as a moderate Democrat. Now, I don't know anything about him. I don't know his campaign. I don't know his platform. I don't know what his ideology is. He's a Democrat that's going against Trump. That's all that they ran on. That's the only thing that I'm sure that they actually campaigned on was saying that, look, you know what? Republicans are failing. Oh, look, you have more money in your paycheck, and that's a terrible thing. You're, he, Donald Trump's getting rid of your Social Security. Donald Trump's getting rid of your social programs. Donald Trump's getting rid of this or getting rid of that. And it's a terrible ordeal. And therefore, we're going to stop Donald Trump and his agenda and all the Republicans that are going along with it. I guarantee you that was probably 95% of the campaign ads. Now, the media is saying that Connor Lamb, the Democrat that actually is winning this right or claim victory on this right now, it's too close to call. They're going to rec- recount all the votes. But they're claiming that Connor Lamb is a moderate Democrat. I, I find that very unlikely. Now, Pennsylvania is predominantly usually a blue state. It was a state that actually turned red for Donald Trump, but it's predominantly been very Democrat as a whole when it comes to national elections. Yes, we have some Republican seats in there like this one that's been predominantly a Republican seat for a while, but as a whole, this state has been predominantly blue. When was the last time passed uh, prior to Donald Trump where Pennsylvania actually went red for a presidency? It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's been predominantly going very, very blue because they feel that they're, I mean, they're big union workers, they're big labor workers, they think that they uh, would do better with a Democrat that supports the unions, that supports the minimum wage hikes, that supports all this and that, and that's what they've predominantly gone for. Then they heard Donald Trump and they ended up swinging that way, and that was a big another blow to Hillary Clinton because she didn't anticipate Pennsylvania going towards Donald Trump. It is a blue state, and when it went for Donald Trump, the progressives in that state were furious, and they're trying to bluff. As the media is helping them out, trying to say this is the blue wave that's going to sweep the nation, that's going to take over the seats, it's, they're going to get the majority back in both chambers of Congress by this fall. They're going to start gaining a bunch more seats all across the nation. This is the bluff that they're doing. The Democrats are broken. They're bankrupt. They're broken. They've lost support. They've lost any form of identity. They don't know what they stand on other than we hate Donald Trump, and that's what we're going to try and fight. They have nothing else. Zero, zilch, nada. They have nothing else. The only thing they can do right now is bluff. Put all of their eggs in one basket and hope that that's going to create the tidal wave. Sometimes when you sink all your money into one basket, remember, that's not always the smart thing to do. That's what they did for this one. 
They're desperate to try and gain some momentum. They thought they had the blue wave in Texas, and as we read all the numbers about all the districts on what would have gone if it was a general election, they would have got their rear ends handed to them in every single election that happened down in Texas except for the ones that they currently already hold. They would have gained zero in Texas. And the blue wave, if you noticed after that election, kind of died off a little bit for the primaries. It kind of faded away. Now they have this one in Pennsylvania. They've sunk all of their money, all of their resources, everything that could possibly scrape into an election, they put into Pennsylvania. They have nothing left. The only thing they have now is to hope and to pray that the voters see a blue wave, as the media is going to portray this as, by winning by 600, 700 votes in this district and saying, look, the Democrats are back, baby. Let's make this happen. When in all reality, the fact is, is that they sunk every resource they had into it. They only won by 700 votes. And oh, by the way, they're still about 20,000 votes short than what they actually had in a regular election back in 2012. In the special election where they were going to change the tide, they were going to be more excited than any other party. They were going to be more excited than any other ideology. They still came up short from what they had when they finally had a Democrat opponent six years ago. Tell me where the Democrat support is. Tell me where the big movement is. Tell me where the growth is when it comes to party activism, when it comes to the blue tidal wave that's going to sweep this nation. I just don't see it. Don't listen to the media. Don't pay attention to the hype. This is nothing more than them putting all their eggs in one basket, sinking all the resources they had into this one, and hoping that there's going to be a residual ripple effect afterwards. And I just don't see it happening. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on the Mid-America Network. Back here to the Voice of Reason. Good to uh, Wednesday, not a Tuesday, now a Wednesday morning tea. Great to have you along today. 316-721-8255. 316-721. Talk better than a cup of coffee, a shot of espresso, even an energy drink this morning as we get you rolling, rocking and rolling. I smell desperation from the progressives. I smell it. I sense it. I got a sense for these kinds of things. They are hoping that there's going to be a natural turnout, a natural ripple effect. You throw the stone into the lake and you see the ripple effect coming from the stone. That's what they're hoping for when it comes to the elections this fall. If they sink enough money into these elections from their own perspective from the state. Look, they got Pennsylvania all railed up. They got Pennsylvania worked up with the union workers, with the progressives saying, wait a second, we usually go blue for the presidency. I can't believe we went for uh, for Donald Trump. Now's the time to start changing things. I'm sure that there was money coming in from all the districts in the state, even nationally, major money coming into this one, being sunk into the race, trying to dethrone the Republicans. It is a brand new Republican, so it's not like it was even versus an incumbent because it was a brand new Republican that was coming in, and it was a hard-fought race. It was a hard-fought race. They won by 700 votes as of right now. They're going to recount it and get the official vote probably sometime today. But as of right now, the Democrat claiming victory on this one in the blue wave, quote-unquote, is sweeping the nation. So that way all the Democrats can understand that there is an opportunity for the Democrats to actually start making ground, taking back over Congress, and blocking Donald Trump for many of his agenda, which I find quite comical. Again, I ask you, why did you still have less of a turnout in this one than we did in a general election 2012? If you're that excited and that riled up, you would have thought that you would have had more of a turnout and it would have been an easy victory for you. But that's not the case and that's not what actually happened. 316 721 We will talk a little bit more about that in the coming hours. At the bottom of the hour here in just about 10 minutes, we'll play our interview with State Representative John Whitmer. We had him on the program yesterday chatting about the latest in Topeka, what he's working on, some of the tax debates that's going on right now, potentially your sales tax going up, potentially your property tax going up, the debate on online sales tax and what that's all going to it consists of. So we'll talk with State Representative John Whitmer coming up in just a little bit. If you're aware of Critics Call Kansas's House GOP School Safety Week Plan Week, we have officially the school safety plan that we are working on. And uh, what is that going to consist of? Well, it's going to consist of a few different 
gun education tools for individuals, yet people are not happy about it. They still want more. The Republicans wanting the Eddie Eagle program from the NRA for the young children. Hey, you know what? There's a gun. Stop it. Drop it and go tell a parent about it or go tell an adult an adult about the gun. The Eddie Eagle program, kind of a nice program. But while we're talking about threats that we've seen, we went through those. If you remember last week, we went through a good five, six, seven cases just within the last month of the South Central Kansas area, all the way from Enid, Oklahoma, all the way up to Wichita, Kansas. Garden City, Dodge City, this entire area where we've seen threats come in. We've seen bullies. We've seen suspended students. We've seen the uh, police being called. We've seen swatting incidents. We've seen bad situations. It's time to take care of our children. And there's a big difference between taking care of our children uh, and when there's the difference between saying that we're going to take care of them and just talking about the hype about it and then actually doing something about it. And the only way we can actually do something about it is if we actually propose an initiative. We actually propose plans. We actually ed- educate the teachers. We educate the students. We do things that are actually productive as opposed to just saying that we're going to put out a 10-year plan on a study and then go about our business. That's not what we can do this time. We have to do something productive. One of them could be, it's very simple. Look, it's very simple if we want to actually fix this. And all it has to be is you have the right to protect your students however you deem necessary in the classroom. Whether that's carrying a firearm, whether that's locking the door, whether that's training and hiding into a nice little bunker in there. It does not matter. if you. I don't know if you've seen these or not, but on social media I've been seeing these new little, it looks like a little bomb shelter thing. Like a little plastic igloo with a bomb shelter that's apparently bulletproof, and you put it in the corner of the classroom, and then if there's any incident, then all the students can can run into this little igloo, bulletproof igloo thing, this little bomb shelter deal, and there you go. You can just sit there and hide. I don't know what the difference between that and actually having the lock on the door is, but nonetheless, I guess you can have the dual purpose to hide as opposed to actually eliminate the threat, right? And everybody can just hide in their own little igloo. We can run away and hide in our safe space, and then we don't have to worry about any threats, right? Let me ask you something. If there's an active shooter in a school or even in any public building and all the public people end up going and hiding in one little area. Do you really think that's going to just make the person with the gun wanting to cause harm just go away? Do you really think that that's going to make him just say, oh, okay, I guess I can't get him? Makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? Now, for some, especially for some of the schools that I get it, some of the teachers may not feel comfortable carrying a firearm. They may not feel comfortable wanting to actually carry a weapon like that or may not be big enough. Maybe it's a more petite elderly woman who's maybe uh, on the end of retiring from her schooling or, uh, I mean, whatever the case is, maybe she's not one that can actually confront someone that is a threat. I get it. And I'm not saying everybody needs to carry a firearm, but we need to find out ways to actually protect our children. If we're going to entrust our children to a teacher or to a school or to somebody for six, seven, eight hours a day, then we want to make sure they're safe and they need to take whatever means necessary in order to do that. I don't really care what it is. Just make it happen. That's not very expensive, by the way. It's all up to us. This is The Voice Reason. Lots coming up. Bottom of the hour news. Your thoughts and calls when we come back. But the school safety plan in Kansas having a little bit of a rocky start as we decide what we're going to be doing here in the state of Kansas. Andy drives you nuts. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Let him know. Call the show, 721-8255. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Oh, man, we're making it happen. Get ready for St. Patrick's Day coming up in just a couple of days from now. I know you're excited about it. I'm excited about it. It's going to be a great day. Welcome back into it. 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK if you want to join in the program. Lots to get to today, and uh, you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's make it a fun one, shall we? We have the election that we need to cover from Pennsylvania. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. Coming up now, I want to play our interview with State Rep. 
Representative John Whitmer. Also, as you know, in the Wichita area coming up here next hour, we'll talk a little bit about the NCAA tournament that's going to be here in Wichita. The team's trying to get all around. Uh, I believe like training starts today or something. Practice starts today on the courts there at Interest at Bank Arena. So we'll talk about a little bit that a little bit about that uh, in just a bit today on the show so lots to get to your thoughts and calls as well 316-721-8255 i do want to shift gears just a minute though and as we talk about the identity of republicans and the identity of democrats and the election that we saw in pennsylvania yesterday the democrats gaining traction quote unquote the blue wave that's moving around and we asked we talked about this a little bit yesterday but what is the identity of republicanism what is it in the state of kansas we have state legislators who are, um, let's put it, moderate to many degree, not all of them, but some of them, many of them, who have believed in the idea of raising taxes, who have believed in the idea of removing the tax breaks that Governor Sam Brownback, former Governor Sam Brownback, put into place because we want more revenue for the state government. And yesterday we sat down with State Representative John Whitmer, who explained some of this, one of the debate discussions that have been happening at the statewide level in Topeka and what we could potentially be seeing in our state right now. Now, he starts off a little goofy because he had a group of individuals in the room with him, which he'll talk about a little bit later in the interview. But this is State Representative John Whitmer yesterday right here on The Voice of Reason. State Representative John Whitmer on the line with us here. John, what's happening, my friend? They're all in French. Um Good luck in high school. John right. Whitmer. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. You got us. We're, we're talking to a bunch. I have a bunch of pages in my office. This oh, morning. there you go. See, see, you're just a busy guy. You're already up in your office in Topeka. You're having a lot of fun uh, trying to breathe in the toxic fumes of Topeka when it comes to politicians. <laughs> and uh, you just got a crowded office there. We we appreciate you joining us here for a minute. I do. In fact, I have six pages from Cheney and Clearwater. Everybody say hello to Amy Hoosier. Hello. Hey, the there it is. is. I love it. Welcome aboard everybody onto the program, and you are on the radio right now, so uh, have a little fun with that one. Uh, you guys have been busy up there the last couple weeks, at, well, uh, so to speak, as uh, the only stories I'm hearing, John, right now is that we're going to pass an online sales tax and that we're going to increase property taxes, and then, oh yeah, we may increase uh, income tax rates as well. Uh, is any of this true? Uh, well, <laughs> It's true that we've heard those. Uh, I'm not on the tax committee, but yes, the tax committee did vote and did pass out a proposal for an Internet sales tax. Um, They have had hearings on raising property taxes by, it's essentially 20 mils, which for folks like the folks here in in my office from Clearwater, that's essentially a 100% property tax increase. Um, yeah, that's that's for their sh- the, the the moms in the room are uh, like cringing at that, um, and there has been some discussion of uh, income tax increases. And you know the sad part is, and I, I just sent out my latest newsletter, so I'm, I'm actually referencing it here. We've had uh, tax receipts for February total 373 million dollars, which is 41 million above February of last year. Sure. We collected 27 million more in taxes than anticipated, and yet they're still discussing raising taxes again. So I don't understand this. Why, if we're bringing in more revenues than we anticipated, more than we need, there's still discussion in this building about raising taxes. Well, but, it boggles the mind because the last story that I saw when we saw the tax revenue being higher than projected is that it's been higher than projected nine months in a row now. And, correct. of course, they only count that starting July when we passed the retroactive tax increase. They forget that we actually had tax receipts higher than projections during Brownback's time at the be- around this time last year as well. It wasn't as much as what we have now, but it was still higher than what we was actually projected. We see more money coming in because, oh, shocker, the economy's doing well, and yet we're trying to raise more taxes to try and kill off that incentive for the economy to grow. Uh, I just don't get it, John. Oh, and it's worse than that. Total tax receipts are $612 million above where they were last year at this time. So you, you consider all kinds of you know benchmarks like that. You do see the economy recovering. Unemployment is low, and yet... We're going to do, well, the, the, the discussion potentially is to do something that would be catastrophic to the economy. You know, I talk to farmers quite a bit. I was doing, a, a, I just have done now three town halls in the district over the last month. And the last thing that farmers could endure would be a property tax increase. The last people want, we already have 
an aggressive sales tax that's highest in the region. We already have a high food sales tax. Mm -hmm. The last thing we can afford to do is turn around and raise taxes again. And yet, the folks, many of my colleagues, don't understand that we have a spending problem. We don't have a revenue problem. But, you know, it's like sometimes I feel like Don Quixote up here, but it it is what it is. Well... We'll continue. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll continue to fight the fight and lead the charge the best that we possibly can and see what actually comes out of it. The question is, is that, though, with the midterm elections right around the corner, will they continue to try and push for that for this session? Or will they say that, well, the economy is okay, we'll kind of squeeze through this year. And then after the election, then we can start talking about the major tax increases. Um, Not with my vote, they can't. But I mean, I don't know where else you can raise taxes anymore. And it's I think we're at that tipping point, and there are many of my colleagues, I think, that are finally coming around to, if if we really want to grow jobs in this state, you can't continue to keep raising taxes in any way. And and we've, we've, you know, we've done efficiency studies, we've looked at it, there are ways that you can find reasonable reforms and reasonable ways to save, Um, whether it be consolidating the Department of Commerce, the Department of Labor, looking at just basic, you know, systematic ways to reform and find efficient spending measures without going back time and time again and asking people to take more of their hard-earned money and send it to Topeka because some up here think that we know how to spend your money better than you do. Sure. And that's really what it comes down to for me. Uh, I'm just, we're not, it's not our money. And, sure. and, and until we realize that it's not our money and stop spending it, that's I think that's what it's going to have to come down to. Let's shift gears a little bit. You mentioned that you have an office full of individuals right now from uh, around the area. Talk about what's on the plate today. What do you do? What what kind of project are you working on up there? So I'm working, in fact, Thursday of this week, I will be running on the House floor a uh, an amendment to lower the sales tax on food. Um, there's an, a, a bill that's on the House floor for debate Thursday. I will be running an amendment to lower the sales tax on food. And um, that will be, it lowers the sales tax on food by 2.1%. And I'm doing that by, here, I can come back. I'm uh, taking off speakerphone since they've had to run <laughs> down and take their pictures with the lieutenant governor. So. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so I will be able to do that on Thursday. Today, actually, we're hearing the swatting bill that passed the House. We're hearing that over in the Senate today. So I'll be testifying in the Senate. Very good. And uh, we actually have a bill in Fed and State next week that it, it some view it as controversial. I do not, but it will protect the religious freedom rights of adoption agencies. It's a, it's I think it's a pretty non controversial bill to be honest with you. But if you've got the private sector, you know, Catholic charities, these uh, organizations that promote adoption. The state shouldn't be dictating to them who that they adopt out children to. Mm-hmm. And all this does is it preserves their right to say that they want to protect who that they adopt families to. Sure. And so that's a bill that we're hearing next week. Um, there is a comprehensive school safety plan that uh, I think you're familiar with, that the uh, I'm part of the task force that the speaker set up. We're working on that right now. That includes the Eddie Eagle and some other safety measures for schools. So there's, I mean, there's quite a bit going on. And then, of course, uh, as I'm sure you know, Thursday evening, Friday morning, we will get the report that the House and Senate Leadership commissioned on school funding. Sure. Busy man That'll be a there. big deal. There it is, State Representative John Whitmer. He was on the program yesterday. We appreciate him very much for joining us as he uh, does whenever he can as we talk about some of the legislative issues. Just think about some of the stuff he's working on. Think about what he just talked about. The gun safety programs, absolutely needed. Do we need to do that in school? Yeah, not only do we need to do the Eddie Eagle program, but maybe we need to do the classes to maybe bring back shooting classes within middle school and high school so students are familiar with shooting firearms. When it comes to sales tax, the Republican, the conservative, for the second year in a row, by the way, probably even more than that. But last year, I remember for sure he had mentioned where he had proposed a 1% sales tax reduction on food, and it got thrown away. Don't even bring it up. Don't even bother about it. Now, this year, a Democrat has brought up, I forget if it was in the House or the Senate, brought up a bill to reduce the sales tax on food. Because remember, now that they're doing well... And they've increased your taxes again. Now they're going to feel very good about that, but they want to relieve you a little bit. So we're here for you. We're here to help you. This is the progressives, by the way. We're here to help you. We raised your taxes. 
We raised your business taxes. We raised your income taxes. We raised your taxes. And we did it retroactively, mind you. So if you're a business, if you're an individual that actually lives paycheck to paycheck, don't worry about it. You're going to be owing the state of Kansas when you file your taxes unless you had a really crazy year. But don't worry. You're going to be owing. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to do you a favor and we're going to lower your sales tax rate on your food. Which, again, as I have mentioned before, I don't believe in the idea of having sales tax on food in any way, shape, or form because I just don't believe in that. I really don't. I don't think they should be having sales tax on food, but that's another discussion for another time. So proposing a bill for a 2.1% sales tax reduction on food, great idea. Is it going to go through? Probably not. I would love to see it. There's not enough Republicans, even with the Republican majority, mind you, in the House and in the Senate, probably not going to get support which means it's up to you and I to make those phone calls. But it's not going to go anywhere. They're going to wait until next year after the election to where they can say, "Eh, we would love to, but we're still running low on revenue. We have more spending to do. It doesn't matter that we've seen 12 months of revenue above projections when it comes to the uh, month-to-month revenue tax receipts. It doesn't matter. We have more spending to do. And therefore, we got a ways. Give us about 10 years. We'll get caught back up on spending. We'll get caught back up on all of our programs. Then we'll take a look at some of your sales tax reductions, income tax reductions. We'll take a look at it down the road. But right now, the priority is making the government healthy. That's the position we're in right now. 316-721-8255. So we have some work to do. Even though we may be that conservative, deep red state of, of the state of Kansas, We still have some work to do because right now the Republicans are torn on their identity. We're working in the moderacy. We're working across the lines. We're working bipartisanshiply. We're working with a compromised mindset to where we can give the Democrats whatever they want and we can get the state back on track with more taxes and more spending. Hooray! This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Number one, can you believe it? St. Patrick's Day right around the corner, just a couple days away. I know you're excited about it. I'm excited about it. You're excited about it. Everybody's excited about it. Facebook Live's up and running. If you want to share that, facebook.com forward slash 1480KQAM. Go there, like it, share it. Let's have a little fun on Facebook today. Leave a comment. Either say, hey, Andy, you look nice today, or Andy, you're just a dorky looking jerk. Whatever you want. I don't really care. Let's go to Rick with the news. What do you say? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Andy. Good morning, everyone. An expert witness for Secretary of State Chris Kobach in trial over Kansas voter registration law has endured intense questioning over his estimation that 18,000 non-citizens have voted in Kansas. Jesse Richmond, an associate professor of political science at Old Dominion, testified yesterday in the sixth day of a federal lawsuit challenging the law, which requires people to show documentation when registering to vote. Lawmakers are considering sports betting in Kansas, but not everyone is on board, even with potentially hundreds of millions of dollars in wagering on the line. A House committee had a hearing yesterday on a bill that would allow the Kansas Lottery to offer sports betting in in in-state-owned casinos over the Internet and with mobile apps. A lobbyist for Hollywood Casino at Kansas Speedway said online betting and wagering with apps should not be allowed, limiting the new gambling to brick-and-mortar locations. A Kansas man's bid to adopt his own grandchildren has new life. The Wichita Eagle reports that 62-year-old David Rose Sr. was told in January that the children ages 6, 5, and 1 would be adopted by their foster family. Rose believed the decision was because he's a single black man while the foster family is a white suburban couple. But it appears that the state is reversing itself. And March Madness is fully underway, and your opportunity to get your brackets here in and around Wichita is ongoing. You've heard where you can pick them up. The brackets must be picked up, filled out, and returned to one of our participating sponsors by 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's the news.
I, it's, oh, I don't. I don't know if you know they need to fill it out because I kind of already had the winning bracket right here. Yeah, but that's just you, ah, and same. you're not eligible to win the two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. So eleven o'clock tomorrow morning is when you have to have those filled out and turned back in, and then we'll go out and gather them up and keep tally to announce. Who is the $250 winner for the closest to perfect bracket after play is complete in this tournament? It's going to be a great time. It is going to be a good time. I'll get to that other story next hour. There you go. All, All right. right. Hey, fun times. Rick with the news. And that's the news. 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK. If you want to join in here as we are wrapping up hour number one. Lots to get to hour number two. As he mentioned, the tournament the NCAA tournament that is coming uh, starting here very soon, and Wichita is going to be the host of some of the games. Everybody's all excited and giddy here in the Wichita area. We have our brackets. If you do want to fill that out, it's your chance to win $250 at Tad's Locker Room. Uh, when we do come back, though, I do want to touch on, as you know, some of these teams are having a difficulty time even getting to the Wichita area. They're throwing a fit about airfare prices, not to mention one of the states with a couple teams that are going to be here, are having a difficult time even getting the funding to get here. Why? Oh, yeah. It's because the state of California wants to actually cause a scene and not have state-funded travel to the state of Kansas, among other states. We'll talk about that coming up in hour number two. Get your thoughts on that and more. Plus, Donald Trump out in California, speaking of the crazy, ridiculous state and the uh, great Republic of California, they are... President Donald Trump going out there taking a look at some of the prototypes of the wall and what the wall is going to look like and getting some heat for that one. Not to mention, if you did not hear Mike Pompeo, the great state of Kansas from the 4th Congressional District originally, now CIA director, now moving up to Secretary of State. We got a lot to get to today. There's kind of some big news. And you know what? All of it happening right here in the Kansas area. The heart of the country literally coming alive right here in Wichita, Kansas, and the surrounding area. There's no better place to be. As we're talking about rates and taxes, as we're talking about what's happening at the federal level and opportunities we have, and then even on the sports side of it, all of it happening right here, and I wouldn't want it any other way. So be proud of it. Let's get excited. Let's get pumped up, and let's make a difference because with the way you and I actually represent – is the way that they were going to be reflected nationally. I have heard some news about someone wanting to cause some protests and issues during the NCAA tournament around here just to try and shame the police. And I say pathetic. I don't know what the point is other than just trying to cause a scene because that's just what they do. The professional protesters not having a life anywhere outside of productivity and actually going to work for a living. This is your show, Western part of the state. Everybody have a great day. This is your show. It's time to speak up. Speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. Hour number two of The Voice Reason coming up. Stay here. It's time for reason. Why should we feel guilty for arresting you? Why should we be like, yeah, you know what? You're okay. You're a chemist. You're a teacher. You're contributing to society. Let's just let it slide. Why? We have laws for a reason. And it makes no sense to me why we would just say, hey, you know what? We need to reform our immigration policy and it's just too stringent. We're just going to say rule of law. Hey, here's a window. Let's go ahead and throw it out there. This is the voice of reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome into the Voice of Reason, hour number two. We're the Voice of Reason right here on the Big Talker, 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side, KQAM, broadcasting live out of Wichita, Kansas, simulcasting on KGPT TV. Welcome aboard. Good morning to you. It's great to have you along today. It is still an adjustment, is it not? It should be bright outside by now. I see some very, very dark blue, so at least it's we're starting to see a little bit of light, but it is still dark. I know it's very difficult for you. Let's wake up together, shall we? 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. It's absolutely an honor to have you along with us today. Like me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash 1480KQAM. See the Facebook live feed, like it, share it onto your own page. Let's spread the word, baby. The algorithms, algorithms on social media don't quite like us yet. They don't like conservative talk radio. They don't like radio shows 
that are actually spouting something other than saying that Donald Trump's a racist or that we should try and overthrow Donald Trump or that Donald Trump is nothing more than a crazy guy who likes to pay off different porn stars. That's not what we do on this show, and that's why algorithms on social media do not like us. So it's your duty to like it, share it, spread it all around. That way we can get the message out as we broadcast live every single day right here on the KQAM Airways. We love having you along. Nine minutes past the hour, 316-721-8255. Coming up in about a half an hour from now, we're going to be having Jim Howell, Cedric County Commissioner, on for our county update. But other than that, it's up to you for the open lines, whatever you want to talk about. As you know... We got a lot to get to today. We'll try and cram through as much of this as we possibly can. We had the election in Pennsylvania last night, and of course, the media is going to go one way. We need to set the record straight. We did that in the first hour. We'll do it a little bit later as well and get your thoughts on what happened in Pennsylvania. President Trump currently in California. While we're trying to look at prototypes for the wall, and of course he's getting threats and people freaking out of the fact that he's in California the first time he stepped foot in California since the election. We have Mike Pompeo. Congratulations to that guy. We broke the news yesterday as that was happening as Mike Pompeo, former CIA director, now becoming to uh, become the secretary of state. Big news there. A lot of progressives freaking out about that one as well. Kind of entertaining. Plus, we have the tournaments. The basketball tournaments happening here in the Wichita area starting today when it comes to the craziness, the tournaments, and you have a chance before it begins. I know the deadline's like 11 o'clock tomorrow. Be there before the end of business today. Show up to one of our participating sponsors. Fill out your bracket for KQAM and KGSO. And by the way, you get a chance to win $250 from Tad's Locker Room if you have the best bracket. Now, I know that you're going to think you have a chance here. The fact of the matter is that I actually have the best bracket out of anybody right now. I'm just throwing it out there. For someone who doesn't follow basketball, for someone who knows nothing about basketball, I totally have the best bracket out of anybody that could possibly fill out a bracket. Just saying. All you got to do is show up to our participating sponsors, fill it out. You don't see the paper ones anymore. Usually you see the online ones. But it's fun just to go and fill out a bracket by hand, and this is a really, really cool one. Show up to our great participating sponsors, Autocraft, Collision Repair, Dr. Warren and Fiegel Optometry, Bill Mall's Allstate Insurance Agency, China's Bart and Grill in Cheney, Design One Upholstery, Davis Liquor Outlet, Phil's Coins, Toppers Plus, Maximum Outdoor Equipment and Services, PJ Sports Bar and Grill, of course, Tad's Locker Room, Heartland Avionics, Hatman Jacks, Continental Truck Accessories, Jewelry Savers, Heartland Bicycle, Chalita's Mexican Restaurant, Auto Tech Service and Audio, Best Friends Pet Clinic, J&G Flooring and Cabinets, Kansas Body Works, Kent and Roxy's Spectacle Shop and Trailers, and more. Show up to any of them before the end of business today. Fill out your bracket and get your chance to win $250 from Tad's Locker Room. So uh, on my bracket, by the way, I do have Cincinnati, North Carolina, Villanova, and Duke all in the final four with North Carolina winning the entire thing. Yeah, I know. People are going to be like, what? But I guarantee you that's going to happen. Just wait for it. Got a couple upsets in there. Yeah, that's okay. It's going to be a lot of fun. Speaking of the tournament, as you know, this is happening in Wichita, and it's exciting for Wichita, is it not? We have different teams coming in. We have the media coming in. We have all the families coming in, all the fans coming in. We have a lot of money that could be coming in for revenue. We have a lot of enthusiasm for the tourist attraction. We have a lot of we have a lot of opportunity that where we can make a stand and we can actually show what Wichita's all about. Now, there's been some individuals that I've seen on social media, some of the progressives, who despise the police force in Wichita as just being the bigoted bigs that they are, those evil, terrible cops who hate individuals. And they've been causing a scene and threatening to start a protest during the tournament this week, so that way they can try and shame the police because the police won't be able to keep any type of order. That's their goal. Not sure what it actually proves or anything, but it just shows how sick-minded some people actually are, which I find interesting. The more interesting part about all this is that I think it was a dig from the NCAA, and I find that quite uh, uh, interesting and entertaining to watch, of the fact that the state of California, as you know, and this came down about, what, six, eight months ago, where they wanted to ban state-funded travel to the state of Kansas. Why? Because they hate us for our quote unquote bigoted, closed minded views and discrimination against gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender individuals and their families. 
Not sure where they come up with that, but that's their mentality. So the state legislature literally passed the law saying that there was zero state-funded travel to the state of Kansas, along with other states like Alabama, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, and Texas are all on that list to where they are not allowed to have state-funded travel. So what happens? San Diego State, baby, getting uh, chosen to come to Wichita for the NCAA tournament, which means that they're going to have to find other means. Uh, Because remember, all of these are subsidized government-run education facilities, which means it would be state-funded, taxpayer-funded, subsidized money traveling, making these teams travel to Wichita and to the state of Kansas. So what do they do? They can't do that. The university faces the, uh, faced the same dilemma last year, according to uh, Candace.com, when it was invited to the Air Force's Bowl in Fort Worth, Texas. And San Diego State was not able to attend via public subsidized taxpayer money. We've dealt with this a couple of times. That means that we have to use non-state funds in order for any expenses that are accrued during the trip. So what do you do? I would love to see... These basketball teams go out doing a bake sale and say, please sponsor me so I can go play basketball in Kansas. But if that was the case, then I'm curious to see what the response would be from the general public. (laughs) If the general public is all up in arms about how Kansas treats the LGBTQ community, then would they actually fund and donate and buy that bake sale in order to fund the state fund or the publicly funded still publicly funded, just not through the government, but the privately donated funds in order to come to the state of Canada, would they actually support it? And if they did, then do you think that the state of California, with their legislation to ban state-funded travel to all these states, may not necessarily represent and reflect the general public's voting opinion on the issue? Because if the taxpayers are okay with actually donating it privately, wouldn't they be be okay with their taxpayer money supporting the team going to the tournament in a state where it's not allowed right now for state-funded travel? Wouldn't that be kind of a hypocritical situation to be in? Oh, you know what? I don't want my taxpayer money to go to it. I just want to donate to you privately. Give me a break. So what are they going to do for the bowl game? San Diego State Athletes Department used the money from its Camp and Isle Foundation, which handles donations to the university. So the individuals that are supporting it, and and you get the phone calls if you're an alumni of any type of university, they'll give you a call and say, hey, support the university, give some money, donate, do the tax write-off, support the university with its different programs, with its maybe expansion or its revitalization of certain buildings, and go ahead and donate to the university. And they got the phone banks for that too. And you'll get the phone calls and you'll get the letters and you'll get everything to try and donate to support the university that you graduated from. And this is one of those foundations to where they get private donations to San Diego State University in order for just whatever. And it brings up another interesting point, doesn't it? Not only one, they're going to use the private donations that I would say still goes into a public institution being a state-funded state university, but it's a private donation. So they're going to use the private donation in order to do state-funded travel to the state of Kansas for this tournament which I find ironic of the fact that they got located here in the first place. But wouldn't that be the same as the taxpayer money going into the university in the same anyways? If individuals are okay in the state of Kansas with their taxes being high when it comes to environmental protection, when it comes to their higher education, when it comes to their K-12 through education, then let's say the K-12 through ends up going on a field trip. They go to a band competition nationally. They go to a singing competition or a wrestling competition nationally. They have a baseball team that does very well. They have a higher education team, like the basketball team at at San Diego State University. Or they have a football team. Or they have a soccer team or a whatever that does very well and they have to travel. Is this the best? I mean, we know that California is messed up anyways. Their legislators are nuts. They know that they want to try to actually break apart from the United States. And I say, go all the power to you, my friends. Good luck to you. I don't really care. I don't really care about the state-funded travel either. I think it's quite ironic because this causes so many loopholes and so many pieces of red tape and so many hurdles for just a single basketball team to be able to travel outside of the state and go and compete that isn't really worth it. And do you think that the legislators in the state would say this is kind of dumb because this is just making it more difficult for us to actually get our name out there. If we want to have our basketball teams, if we want to have different athletic teams go and compete around the country, then we probably should lift these bands so that way they can actually travel to where they need to travel with. 
and are they properly representing their people? Now, I think that we could play into this a little bit and we could come in and uh, maybe you and I could make a point at these tournaments. And we could make that by just asking them and going and asking the players or talking to the coaches or having signs or whatever and just asking them, how did you get here? Oh, you got private donations. Oh, that's nice. Did they have to do a bake sale? Maybe we could have a little fun with this. Maybe we should talk to them on the radio a little bit and see, you know, what they're, I mean, obviously they're focused on the basketball team and the basketball team should be focused on the basketball team and the basketball game. That's what they're here to do. But come on. You're not going to allow your state-funded money, your taxpayer money, to actually allow them to travel, but you're going to do the private donations to do so. I guess the good news is is that if we are going to look at the way that state-funded education should be, that I guess it should be private donations in the first place, right? That the education should have kind of the private donations for the programs that it wants to actually fund to go and do. So private donations would be fine, but to use the money by private donations, by people willingly supporting the travel of the team but not supporting it through their taxpayer money, I find completely hypocritical, and it shows the absolute lunacy of what California is set up to be like. 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. The fun shenanigans of getting ready for the NCAA tournament, nothing against the rest of the teams that are coming here. We welcome them with open arms. We're going to have a lot of fun this weekend. If you're into basketball, you're going to see some great tournaments, and you're going to have a little fun when it comes to the kickoff of the craziness. And again, you have your chance to follow your brackets with KQAM, KGSO, getting your chance to win $250 from Tad's Locker Room. 20 minutes past the hour. we got a lot to get to today. This is The Voice of Reason. Stay here. The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. of reason 26 minutes past the hour great to have you along today great to be with you on a wednesday we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel it is the free free friday celebration let's make it a good one today shall we what do you say 316-721-8255 316-721-TALK if you want to join into the program it's open lines to you coming up in just a little bit we have Sedgwick county commissioner jim howell for our county weekly update as you know last week not the biggest most uh, uh issue driven county commission meeting this week going to be a little bit different and we'll have some fun time uh with him in just a little bit here hour number three is going to be open lines to you for the entire time as we have a mooey number of stories to be able to get to today and get your thoughts on by the way today is national pie day i don't know if anybody's aware of that or if anybody even follows that or even knows what it is according to the latest study one in five americans have no idea what pie even is now as we talk about education and we talk about trying to educate the youth and trying to get them to, I don't know, graduate and understand basic common sense and being able to actually understand basic math. Not common corn math, but actual basic math as we talk about uh, ways to properly fund education. And it goes into that entire debate. If one in five Americans don't even know what pi is, today being March 14th, being the number of pi, 3.14, if no one knows what that is, Now, some may forget because it's been a long time since school, but if nobody knows that one in five Americans don't even know what that is, we have a problem. We have a serious problem. Remember the whole squiggly thing with the two lines? Yeah, that thing, pi. (laughs) Now, I remember when I was in AP Calculus, that was fun in high school, my calculus teacher actually on pi day would actually, she would make a bunch of pies and we'd have pie while we did our class that day. And it was a lot of fun. But... Today, the latest study, one in five Americans do not ha- do not have any, any idea what even what pi is that shows where our education system is today. According to nationaltoday.com, the National Pi Survey, 19% of Americans need to repeat math because they have no idea what pi actually is. When asked what pi is a measure of, 66% of Americans guessed correctly that it is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. Another 15% of Americans guessed it incorrectly, while 19% admitted that they have no idea what it actually is. More than half of Americans plan to celebrate Pi Day, which means you need to start making your pie now. 55% of Americans plan to celebrate Pi Day this year. The most popular way of celebrating, eating pie-themed foods, of course. 
and how well we celebrate. 43% say they will eat pie-themed foods. Uh, 16% said that they will post it on social media. <laughs> Not sure what you can do with that. Uh, 15% said that they would jog or walk 3.14 miles. If you decide to jog or walk 3.14 miles today, then you are nuts. Just saying. The top, uh, top five most interesting insights about pie. Number one. 15% of Americans said that they wish there was a pie emoji. I don't know what we'd use it for, but nonetheless, they wish there was a pie, e- like an actual squiggly line, two lines pie emoji. Number two, Albert Einstein is actually my hero. 12% of Americans say that his birthday is on the same day as Pi Day. 11% say I'm a huge math nerd. 6% say that they memorize more than 10 of the digits in pie. And 2% say that they have a pie tattoo so happy national pie day to i i don't know who would get a pie tattoo either than saying i'm a nerd (laughs) i don't know who would actually get a pie tattoo but nonetheless congratulations if you actually do it shows your non-conformism conformism man that you actually love numbers and math and that you're a free thinker (laughs) but if we don't know what pie is then we have some serious issues with our educational system maybe we should reach out to some of the schools and see what they're doing to celebrate national pie day on March 14th and see if we actually remember what pi actually is. Just imagine you graduating and someone saying, hey, what's pi? I don't know. Not knowing that at least 3.14, at least memorize that. We have some work to do, ladies and gentlemen, and we want them to vote. I don't know what pi is. Is the day you pie? Yes. Yes, it is. Bottom of the hour news coming up. This is The Voice Reason. Stay here. news on a daily basis i hope now you boys see that this is totally serial the voice of reason with andy hoosier make it happen today welcome into the voice of reason right here on a wednesday starting off your day the right way better than a cup of coffee a shot of espresso even an energy drink because that's just what we do right here on the show welcome in 316-721-8255 316-721-TALK if you want to join in i do want to remind you by the way and it's been happening the last couple of days. We have two winners already. If you want a pair of tickets, now is the time to do so. The show is next week, March 22nd through the 25th. It is Disney on Ice, and you have a chance to get a pair of tickets right here on the KQAM Airwaves. All you got to do is listen during Laura Ingram from noon to 2. Listen for the sounder. Call in. Be caller number one and get your pair of tickets. Go see. Take the kiddos. Go see Mickey Mouse, Minnie, all the great little princesses. I know my daughter is extremely excited about this. Anna, Elsa, Olaf, Moana, Nemo, and Dory. Don't you worry. All of them will be there. It is Disney on Ice next week at Interest Bank Arena. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And you have a chance to win your tickets. All you got to do is listen for the sounder during Laura Ingram every day this week, noon to 2. The show's next week, the 22nd through the 25th. Get more information on the show at interestbankarena.com or buy your tickets at selectaseat.com. And to get your tickets for Disney on Ice next week right here in Wichita. So that's going to be fun. What day is that? That is the 22nd through the 25th. So that is uh, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday through Sunday next week. Isn't it, it just boggles my mind how, how uh, efficient the people of a venue can be. I mean, they've Damn. been working on making Intrust Bank Arena a basketball NCAA mecca. Uh, beginning today through Saturday for, you know, how long, you know, dreams realized. We've got the NCAA tournament coming to Wichita. And then whammo blammo by next Thursday, it's Disney on Ice. Disney on Ice. Well, even before that, last Friday, they had Winter Jam, the Christian uh, rock show, rock concert there, which I really wanted to go to. Skillet was there, and Skillet's one of my favorite bands in the world. 
and uh, ended up missing that one. But they, yeah, they turned Winter Jam and then turned right around and getting ready for the basketball tournament. And Hartman Arena Disney the same way. Hartman Arena the same way. Quick turnarounds, know, we baby. Doing uh, college Kansas college basketball last week, and then last night Chicago. Chicago. They got so. boxing matches coming up. It's a great time. So lots of stuff. If you say, oh, there's nothing to do around here, well, you're just not paying attention, baby, because there's a lot to do. Let's go to Rick with the news. Hey. Hey, good morning, Andy. Good morning, everyone. A 16-year-old girl died in a one-vehicle crash in Dickinson County on Monday morning. That accident happening on I-70 about nine miles east of Abilene. KSN-TV reports that the Kansas Highway Patrol says a 2016 Nissan driven by the teen was eastbound on I-70 when for some unknown reason the vehicle left the roadway and then continued to travel striking a concrete culvert and overturning then catching fire. KSN reports the KHP crash log indicates the victim died at the scene. Kansas Governor Jeff Collier has declared a drought emergency warning or watch across the entire state. Collier signed an executive order yesterday following several weeks of abnormally dry conditions in all 105 Kansas counties. He declared an emergency for 28 southern Kansas counties, a warning for 29 other counties in central and southern Kansas. The remaining 48 counties are under a drought watch. The order opens up land in the Federal Conservation Reserve Program for cattle grazing and temporarily lifts height and weight restrictions on trucks for easier shipping of hay into drought-stricken areas. A former Kansas congressman could be the next head of the State Department. President Donald Trump announcing yesterday that Rex Tillerson was gone as Secretary of State and that he wanted Mike Pompeo to be the replacement. Addressing reporters, Mr. Trump told reporters that his decision was guided due to chemistry with Pompeo. Trump said, I've always, right from the beginning, from day one... I've gotten along well with Mike Pompeo, Trump said. Pompeo had only been CIA director since January of 2017. Prior to that, he served six years in Congress representing Kansas. And yeehaw, that's what I can say right now. Yeehaw. Yeehaw, baby. Yeehaw. There you go. Just a good old boy. Yes, authorities in Colorado are looking for a man suspected of stealing a snowcat fitted out to look like the General Lee, the, <laughs> the famous car that was featured in the classic television series The Dukes of Hazard. Co-owner John Brandenburg says the large treaded snow vehicle was on a trailer outside of a restaurant when someone hitched it up, drove it away sometime Sunday, he immediately took to social media and got several responses from people who said they saw a pickup truck hauling it westbound on I-70 in Colorado. Brandenburg says the thief covered the snowcat in tarps, but the decal on the side door was still visible. That's a dead giveaway. KCNC in Denver reports the snowcat was tracked to a garage in the Grand Junction area. A SWAT team was deployed. But the suspect managed to get away. It's kind of a mixture between uh, Dukes of Hazard and uh, Smokey and the Bandit right there. Yeah. 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 There you so, go. Well done, guys. They're going to have to bring Daisy in to uh, lure the guy who it, stole it. Exactly. You know, it makes sense. Going back to the Mike Pompeo story, it makes sense. We've been trying to get him on the show, and it's very difficult, obviously. <clears throat> He's been the head of the CIA, and whatever he says on the radio, he'd probably have to kill us all at the end of it afterwards. Right. Uh, right. After explaining. And now going to be Secretary of State. going to be very difficult to get him on the show. We'll try and do so. But if you remember at the very beginning, when he first got the CIA position, and there was a roundtable where they were all introducing themselves as the new cabinet members and everything, and this was during the whole James Comey FBI thing where the FBI was leaking information about investigations. And Mike Pompeo had a great line right to President Trump when he introduced himself, and he said, I'm Mike Pompeo, head of the CIA, and I promise you, I'll not leak any information to the media. And if you remember that, he said that directly to the president, and it made the entire room chuckle and laugh, uh, which means that he's probably not going to reach out to us to actually do any radio interviews. Well, and I don't believe any of the reports that that Trump said, Tillerson, you're fired. Now who's the moron? Yeah. I it, see, see, no, it hasn't happened. This hasn't happened. Of course, though, you know, the, dis- the disgruntled progressives that just despise Donald Trump. Anyways, oh, look at the chaos in there. 
Rex Tillerson did have a little bit of an emotional response, though, yesterday when he made his statement. Well, he is bummed. He is bummed. <laughs> but you know what? You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. There you know, it is. It's, it, it's, it's incredible. This, this administration is incredible. I mean, and the naysayers are out there saying their nay and let them. That's okay. Let them. Haters going to hate. Hate is going to hate. But, That's all right. Uh, He's we, still trucking along. We've got a lot positive going, and I would say the positive is way, way, way more outweighing the negative in this administration. So That's hey, what it is. You got to make changes. Got to make changes. Period. Make sure that where you find the right person to do the right job. And I think my, Mike Pompeo is going to do an absolutely fantastic job because he kind of has that mindset of Donald Trump is running things like a business, kind of like the military, very strict, very tight. Do you think and- Tillerson called Trump a moron? Nah. I don't think so. Maybe behind closed doors. <laughs> you don't Maybe do behind that. closed doors. <laughs> yeah. You don't you do don't that. You don't do that. That's not what you do. You're fired. That's what we do. <laughs> Rick with the news. And that's the news. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll have uh, Cedric County Commissioner Jim Howell joining the show as well. Speaking of uh, when it comes to really great things that are actually happening, we see some really great things happening, and the media is going to try and stomp that out. They're going to try and put out the fire of republicanism and conservatism, especially after that election last night in Pennsylvania. We do need to touch on that again a little bit later. We'll do that now in hour number three. We'll do the recap of what the election actually looked like compared to the history of that district and how to move forward as Republicans and conservatives. So a big election that happened last night. Still some really great things happening, even though the Democrat may have won by six, seven hundred votes. They're going to do a recount. Obviously, that's too close to call on that one. But the Democrat claiming victory. How do Republicans move forward from that election will be very interesting to see. We'll get your thoughts on that in our number three. Take a break. We're wrapping up our number two. We'll get Cedric County Commissioner Jim Howell on the line for our county update of the week. This is the voice reason. Stay here. You're listening to The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. So reason wrapping up hour number two. It goes by way too fast on this program. Great to have you along today. About 10 minutes to the top. 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK. If you're going to join in right here on the program, it is a Wednesday. It is officially three days away to St. Patrick's Day, the greatest day of the entire... Now, Friday... I want to see, here's what we're going to do on Friday. I'm going to be obviously wearing the green for St. Patrick's Day on the show. You can see it on Facebook Live. You can see it on KGPT TV. You'll be able to see it wherever. I want you to send me pictures, selfies or pictures or something, and post them on the Facebook Live on Friday of you wearing green. That's going to be the fun shenanigans that we're going to be doing on Friday. So stay tuned in for that as we get ready for the literally the greatest holiday of the entire Year. It is time for our county update. Central County Commissioner Jim Howell. There it is. Central County Commissioner Jim Howell on the line with us. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Good good morning, Andy. I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, we're living the dream. Are you wearing green on Friday and Saturday? You know, it's a conflict because I'm afraid there's some NCAA teams that might be a green (laughs) team. I'm not sure I want to support them. Well, as long as there's like a pitcher of beer or an Irishman on the T-shirt or something, then I think you're okay. Hey, well, it's a conflict. Or maybe a le- I'll, I'll, I'll get you a leprechaun hat. That way you can wear the leprechaun hat, and that way there's a distinct... Unless maybe it's like Notre Dame or something that's going to be here, but I don't think they're even in the tournament this year, are they? No, I don't think they are. In fact, I uh, filled out my bracket yesterday, and I didn't see them on there. So uh, yeah. um, I'll tell you what, though. This is going to be a pretty happening place this weekend with the St. Patty's Day coming along and the NCAA tournament. Uh, I will tell you, the uh, the county is... Uh, we have... We have more excitement in this community right now than I think I've ever seen since I've, I've lived here most of my life. And, mm-hmm. and I think uh, this, this community is really hyped right now for a lot of reasons. But this is uh, pretty awesome. The Stars are lined up this weekend, and, and uh, literally the Stars are lined up this weekend. We've got uh, four games at the NCAA tournament that starts here in Wichita uh, tomorrow. And again, a couple of games on Saturday. And we are extremely happy about that. It's been taking us uh, most of a decade to get this in place. And, and now here, here it is right before us. And so one of the things I'll tell you about today in our in our meeting, we are going to have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, we've asked uh, uh, commissioners to wear a sports themed clothing at the beginning of our meeting. We're not going to keep it on the whole time. We'll actually go put our coats and ties on at some point <laughs> here. But 
Ah. Um, but I, I actually thought maybe David Dennis would wear a referee uniform. I thought would be a lot of fun. So there you go. Um, there you go. Yeah, you know he he actually does ref for some sporting uh, things around town. So he's extremely sports. Uh, uh, you know he, he's connected to sports in a number of, of ways, especially through the high schools. And so sure. he has all that stuff. And I thought it might be fun. I don't know what he's going to do though. We'll see. Um, anyway, we are very very excited about the NCAA um, tournament, and uh, so that's going to be part of our meeting this morning. Uh, a couple of other things we've got kind of coming up here. Um, probably the one that's got people kind of uh, kind of talking right now is the property tax appraisals. The valuation notices came out earlier this month, and people are pretty, uh, you know, I guess concerned and, and maybe frustrated or, or upset perhaps because their valuations went up. Um, believe it or not, fifty nine percent of uh, homeowners their property values went up, and the average uh, increase was five percent. Wow. Um, so if you think about that, that's over 100,000 homes in the Sedgwick County area that are looking at about a 5% increase. You know, I understand that's uh, very, very frustrating, especially when you say, well, I didn't, I didn't even put a, you know, I didn't improve my home. How come I went up 5%? <laughs> I will tell you, it, it's first thing I want you to know, no, no, and I hope everybody gets this. We'll have this in the meeting today, but the county appraiser is an independent, uh, agency. They don't actually work for the county. We pay the salary, but we don't, uh, they don't answer to us. And sure. so they do, they do some reporting to us. But uh, they actually work for the Kansas uh, Department of Revenue, and um, so uh, the the frustration is, you know, people think the taxes are going to go up by however much the house went up. Well, the good news is Sedgwick County was one that uh, actually has advocated for and supported uh, legislation that we call the tax lid, and so we can only capture an increase in our budget that is uh, below the consumer price index, or what we call inflation. Sure. Um, and so that we have a little bit of a uh, stop gap in place, although there is some loosey goosey uh, exemptions to that. One of those is public safety, and so um, some some organizations might still increase taxes and just pump all that money into public safety. And because the budgets have fungible dollars, they pull money back out. And you know, so there, it's not really a perfect law. We need to do some to do some tweaks to that. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't think taxes are going to go up by the same amount that your tax uh, valuation went up. But I do want him to talk about that today so people understand how this happened and what they can do if they think the numbers are wrong. And uh, so that's a part of our meeting this morning. Another big part of our meeting is we, we do a, actually look at grants, uh, you know, federal and state grants, uh, almost every meeting. And I looked it up yesterday. We have 77 active grants, uh, total values of $37.7 million flowing through Cedric County from state and federal government. But we're going to consider one of our major grants this morning. It's uh, from KDHE, or Kansas Department of Health and Envi- Environment. And they basically pump a bunch of money into our health department for all kinds of programs. And uh, altogether, I think, there's seven or eight different programs that they run with a single grant. And that grant is worth $1.8 million. Um, I'll tell you that uh, there's been some controversy, uh, political controversy, on whether we should or, accept, you know, should or should not accept grants. I'll tell you that a large portion of our overall budget is grant funded. And so we will see most of those grants will be accepted. I think you'll see most of those grants get five to zero votes. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not saying, I don't know that I agree that this is the way we should fund government. Um, I think that uh, more, more responsibility should be from, from locals and rather than from state and federal governments. Cause I don't think, especially the feds, it's not their, not their thing, but um, they, you know, they've set these things up and that's how it works. And so, and unless we can uh, have mass change, um, more than likely these grants will just continue. But we do have a major grant today. And then probably the one that people might think is interesting, and this, this is a little bit of fun, I, I suppose, but the, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, or FFR, FFRF, <laughs> has been sweeping the nation trying to uh, get us uh, to, I guess, feel intimidated by them uh, through litigation, uh, that we would uh, change our invocation policies. They're the bullies. Neither, and either let them have an invocation, which I don't even know what that means. Uh, how is an atheist to do an invocation? By the way, you can go on YouTube and see a few of these. They're just basically political speeches. Um, either that or basically not have an invocation at all, which is a long-held tradition. You know, for hundreds of years, uh, governing bodies have had invocations. And so we uh, we check this out legally. We think we're fine. Um, if they want to continue this, I guess, game on. But, um, uh, you know, it did make the news yesterday because one of our commissioners did uh, – make a little uh, interesting statement and i think it made the news you might have seen you might have seen that andy oh we did and uh, <laughs> made the comment and just said that if you don't believe in god that's fine with me i don't care go to hell it's fine uh which you know what all the power to him i'm glad that you guys and i got to give you kudos for 
for everybody on the commission for standing up to these individuals because they're nothing more than bullies. They want to intimidate, like you mentioned. They want to try and do their political speech. They're going to tie up litigation. They're going to pay. To, they're going to spend taxpayer money on litigation because all they want to do is cause issues. So uh, for us to stand up against them is uh, number one really courageous and number two what we should be doing so thank you guys for continuing to do that and hopefully that continues on well thank you very much and um, i don't know if anything else you want to talk about but i just want to remind everyone that we do uh we do encourage everyone to be aware of these meetings there's a lot of policy being made here at the county we impact your lives probably more than any other level, level of government in terms of mm-hmm. uh, your daily life and how you commute around the uh, town but um, I would just tell people if they want to get engaged, we we love people to attend our, to attend our meetings, and they, we always give them a chance to speak. That's always a great opportunity. And I guess I'll just finish up with one more thing. As people are stuck in traffic this morning, I want them to know um, that uh, we have two road projects I think are significant that we I, I like to stress. One of them is actually on the budget, I should say, on the agenda this morning. We have a number of uh, pieces of uh, uh, agenda items in our consent agenda that basically sets up a uh, um, the, the project where we can widen Green, Greenwich Road. And yeah, we call it Greenwich Road here in Kansas and Wichita. <laughs> but we, we're going to widen Greenwich Road between um, Harry, Harry and Pawnee, which is a pretty good uh, project around Southeast High School because we have a kind of a bottleneck there. And so that'll be very welcome to have that done. And that should start here this summer. And then we have another project we, we call the North Junction. And people are very familiar with the Kellogg and I-235 interchange. That's supposed to wrap up next spring. If not, uh, not spring, it'll be in the summer. But right behind that, we've got uh, the first phase of our North Junction project starting next spring as well. Very and that's good. going to be up over Key 96, meets 254, and uh, 135, 235. A lot of information, a lot to get there. State uh, County Commissioner Jim Howell, appreciate you joining us, my friend. Uh, it's going to be a big meeting today. Next week, we'll look forward to hearing on uh, some of the meetings, especially when it comes to those property taxes. I think it's going to be a big issue. So thank you, my friend. We'll look forward to chatting with you again next week. Hour number three, The Voice Reason, coming up. Stay here. Speak. It's time for Reason. Why should we feel guilty for arresting you? Why should we be like, ah, you know what, you're okay. You're a chemist, you're a teacher, you're contributing to society. Let's just let it slide. Why? We have laws for a reason. And it makes no sense to me why we would just say, ah, you know what, we need to reform our immigration policy and it's just too stringent. We're just going to say, rule of law, hey, here's a window. Let's go ahead and throw it out there. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome into the Voice of Reason, hour number three. The Voice of Reason right here broadcasting live out of Wichita, Kansas on the Big Talker, 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side, KQAM. Also simulcasting on KGPT tv Great to have you along. It's great to be with you. Making it happen on a Wednesday. We are two days away from the weekend. We are three days away from St. Patrick's Day. We are really a day or so away from basketball stuff and shenanigans that is beginning to happen. The basketball tournament, even right here in the Wichita area. I know you're excited about that. Ready to go. It's, I mean, just the fact that we have it in our own community is kind of an exciting thing, is it not? That we get to be part of this. We actually get to host something really cool and really and i'm not a basketball guy i'll be the first one out of any of the sports i enjoy baseball i enjoy football i don't necessarily enjoy the nfl but i enjoy college football Uh, out of all of the sports basketball is probably the one that i follow the least amount i can name one player i can name one well okay i can name two players one of them's probably retired one, I know he's retired. Michael Jordan, I, can, I know that name, and I know LeBron James. That's about the only names that I know, honestly. I, I mean, I know some of the older ones like Scottie Pippen and some of the other old ones from the Michael Jordan era. Other than that, I can't name any basketball. But it's just exciting to know that we're going to be hosting something really special here in the Wichita area. So I think we should be proud of something like that. Nine minutes past the hour. It's great to have you today. My name is Andy Hoosier, 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. It is open lines to you for this entire third hour. We have a lot to cram in, so let's go ahead and make it happen, and let's start off with a phone call this hour. What do you say? Good morning. What's your name? Good morning, Andy. This is Ron. Ron, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Yourself? Hey, we're living the dream. More fun every day. Yeah, uh, that was good. You had uh, Commissioner Howell on. Uh, you know, th- this thing uh, just melts right in with what they're trying to do with HB 2740 up there in the in the state house, you know, 
you raise the assessment on one end, you're going to get taxed more. <laughs> and then you you got a, a bill that's going to double your taxes over four years mm-hmm. on your income uh, or your property taxes. So, uh, you know, we need to get on the phone. That thing's still in play. Call your representatives right now and tell them not no, but hell no. I, I think that individuals forget sometimes. And I mean, we go through our daily grind and we go to work every day and we're punching the clock and we're bringing the family home some dinner and buying the pizza, whatever we do every day. And we forget that we actually have a really, really loud voice in Topeka as long as we make that phone call or send that email. Most people forget about that, but we do have that loud voice. All we got to do is make that call because how many other people are actually doing that? So one phone call, one email, one social media tweet, one whatever, by or just going and knocking on their door if they're your neighbors, just saying, hey, I have an issue with this. Can you explain what you're doing or can we change this a little bit? By doing that really does go a long way. Yeah, you're right. Uh, on the uh, talking about high day. <clears throat> yes. Well, everybody knows that pie are round, cornbread are square. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like that. That's a good one. I have not heard that one before, but that uh, that makes great sense. I love it. Ron, I appreciate the call very much. No, you bring up a really interesting point when you're right, when it comes to the property taxes. And just imagine this. If you remember, Sedgwick County Commission has actually been one of the great counties to where they've actually fought state legislation said, hey, you know what, we need to have legislation that says if you're going to raise property taxes or raise the mill levy at a statewide level, that it needs to be on the ballot for the people to be able to vote on. Because they should not be able to look. A lot of us, most of us have property. We have property. Whether you're a farmer and you have massive lands of property, whether you own a home, you have property. And for whatever reason, the government has loved the idea of being able to control your property. Even if you have your home paid off, you still pay property tax on that every single year, don't you? You still pay the property tax. It's not really yours, is it? Because you always pay tax on it every single year that you actually own it. It's not one of those where you pay it and it's a one and done thing and it's over and you don't have to worry about it anymore. You always pay property tax, which means that your property that you own as a private property individual in a capitalist system is never actually honestly truly yours. They don't feel that it's actually yours, that you're actually just borrowing it from the government and that you're going to give them the tax money in order for them to lease it out to you, per se, every single year. That's the way the government sees your property, your personal private property. That's the way they see it. And there should be legislation to say if we're going to raise the property tax levy, mill levy on your property, that you need to be able to vote on it to, for you to decide whether it's a good idea or not. And our county commission has actually done a very good job at fighting that legislation and fighting for something like that. It hasn't happened. It hasn't gone through. Now we're seeing the uh, county assessor going around and saying, yeah, you know what, a lot of the values around here are going up, which is a good thing. The fact that your value, the, your property is actually going up is a good thing. Now you've got to pay a little more property tax, but that's good news. You should be happy about that. Because, hey, you know what, if I decide to sell it, guess what? The value of my home's 5% better than what it was last year, which means that I could probably sell it for a little bit more. That is good news. The economy's going up. That means people may have a little more money, a little more assets. Their property is valued a little bit higher. That is good news, but at the same time, the property tax is going to go up. You're going to be paying more in your property taxes. Then you add on the state on top of that saying, the state government kind of needs some more money. Hint, hint, wink, wink. I'm going to raise your sales taxes on a lot of things, but I'm also going to raise your property tax rates. <laughs> Funny how they do that, right? So not only are we going to see the rates go up just by the uh, the assessor saying, hey, the, your, values, your property is actually valued a little bit more. Then we're going to turn around and potentially see, within the next year or two, seeing the state legislature say, yeah, you know what, we don't need your signature on this. We don't need the vote of the actual people of Kansas on this. We're just going to raise your property tax. So, And especially people out in like Derby. Not only did you openly admit, yeah, let's go ahead and raise my property tax. <laughs> That's going to be a great idea. But then you're going to see your uh, property assets go up, so the value is going to go up and you're going to pay more. Then the state's going to tag on another property tax increase on top of you. When do you have the buyer's remorse? When do you actually have the remorse for doing what you were doing by wanting to actually think that your property is an asset for the government to milk for the rest of your life while you own that property? I never understood that. I think it's completely absurd, and I think we need to get rid of something like that. Or we need to start going. Look, this goes into the same situation as what we talked about with sales tax for your food. When 63 64%-ish of state tax revenue comes in from sales tax, 
And then we have income taxes number two at like 30 some odd percent. And then we have a little bit of it for property tax. Why don't we start eliminating property tax at the state level? Why don't we only do it for the county? And the county has to decide, hey, you know what, let's go ahead and put it on a ballot vote so that way you can decide whether we raise it up or not for spending at the county level, not at the state level. And then I guess if you want to, be able to tag it on for the education for the local school bonds on top of that as well if they decide to do that. There's so many different ways where they milk it. They milk the system. They try and raise it up just a little bit. Oh, don't worry. You just raised it a slice of pizza for every $100,000 on your property in Derby just a few months ago with the school bond issue. Don't worry. That's not going to be that big of a thing. It's only a pizza. It's only a pizza. It's only 10 bucks for every $100,000 of your home and for your property. Don't worry about it. Then you have the state saying, hey, you know what? We're going to raise it up a little bit. It's only going to be two pizzas for every $100,000. It's only $20 a month for your property for every hundred thousand dollars don't worry it's not that much you can afford that it's only a little bit well guess what now you're already thirty dollars a month in the hole more so than what you were doing before can you afford that Eh, whatever then you know what the property value goes up Ah, we're gonna raise it up a little bit more your value goes up you're gonna start paying more because you're at a higher rate so not only is it now three pizzas but now it's gonna be five pizzas you see how it accumulates You see how it builds up in the government? They're just taking little slices. It's not that big of a deal. Don't you worry about it. You shouldn't fret. And you're freaking out because you just don't want high taxes, you right-wing nut job wearing the conspiracy theory tinfoil hat that you think the government's going to start taking all your assets and all your property. You're crazy thinking that. Pretty soon, you're looking at 10 pizzas a month because the next year they're going to say, ah, we need another school bond. Ah, the government's not doing well. We need some more money. Ah, you know what? The county ran into a little hole. We spent a little too much last year. Ah, we need a little bit more when they're pulling from all different directions guess what that one property asset that you have you don't own that property anymore do you it all builds up it's funny how debt accrues like that right i mean you see that with your personal assets oh your credit card eh, swipe it i'll pay it later Ah, it's zero percent interest or whatever Ah, swipe it swipe it pretty soon all those little tiny purchases add up and you're like oh yeah how did i get my credit card completely maxed out at a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever it is how did i possibly get my credit card maxed out it's because of a month of spending it on little tiny things and now all of a sudden you got a big bill to pay off but you can't because all your money's going towards your property taxes Funny how that works, isn't it? 316-721-8553, 316-721-TALK. The property tax issue is a huge issue, and they're going to continue to milk it. As long as you allow it, you the voter, you the constituent, you the person that actually owns property, if you allow it, they're going to continue to do it. And by the way, the ones that don't own property, they're just going to say, ah, you're the rich and elite because you own property and you own a home anyways. You can afford it. Because you are the rich and elite. We don't own property, so it's not our deal. That's your deal, and you need to pay for mine. Because you're the rich and elite, and obviously if you can afford a house, then you can afford all the property tax increases, the mill levy rates, because, eh, you know what, you're the rich and elite. You are the privileged individuals in society. Right? 316-721. Let's go to the phones. Line number two. Good morning. What's your name? Hey, it's Dave. Hey, good morning, Dave. How are you, sir? I'm great, and you? Hey, we're living the dream every day. Hey, you are missing one thing when you say that, you know, hey, if you own farmland, if you own a home, you know, there's a lot of people that don't own either. Sure. They pay property tax, too. Every economic study that's ever been conducted on renters says that the property tax paid by the landlord is just added right Mm. on to the rent. It's just passed right along to the renter. It's a great point. There's never been an argument that says, oh, no, the the landowner just eats that cost. Sure. It's always passed on to the renter. Well, the renter doesn't see that. don't feel it. Exactly. They don't feel it, but they're paying it, too. They're paying it. And I just want to make sure that 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 was out there. No, that's that's a great point. I'm glad you mentioned that. You're right. I mean, the renters, because the renters, when you hear a lot of this argument saying that you own property, so therefore you need to pay it because you're the rich and elite and you're, you're whatever, uh, that comes from a lot of individuals like the renters, like the uh, the ones that live in an apartment or live in a townhome or live in something like that where they're renting it out because they don't feel like they're paying it. So therefore, they're usually the ones that have the loudest voice saying that the property rates need to go up more because you can afford that. But you're absolutely right. That's being tied into their rent on a, day, on a monthly basis because the rent owners are saying, yeah, you know what, we had the property tax rates and I'm not going to pay for that, so I'm just going to subsidize it into their rents and distribute it among all my uh, all my tenants and and be able to pay for it that way. So you're right, they pay for it. They they just don't realize it a lot of times. Absolutely. That's a great uh, hey, point. 
You, you take care. Have a great day. Hey, you too, Dave. I appreciate the call very much. Ac- excellent point. You're absolutely right. They still pay for it. They just don't realize it. <laughs> kind of like, you know, the whole free college thing. They're already paying for the subsidized K-12 through education. Kind of like the higher education. It's already subsidized through the taxpayer money. But remember, even if you're living in your parents' basement and you're renting that out, you're probably paying for your parents' uh, property taxes to some degree. They just don't realize it while they're complaining that, well, you're the rich and elite and it's just not fair that you have something and I don't. You're still paying for it, my friends. Guess what? Socialism at its best. How do you feel about that one? This is The Voice of Reason. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Month of May, now from me home, I started left the girls and two and nearly broken hearted. Saluted father, dear, kissed me, darling mother, drank a pint. Welcome back into the voice of reason. 25 minutes past the hour. Appreciate you hanging out with us today on a Wednesday right here on the Big Talker Cake. Is that a little leprechaun dancing over in the corner? Oh, I see a little leprechaun over here now. Hey, there we go. (laughs) St. Patrick's. See, great. I tried to send out a a company-wide email. They didn't like it, but I I said that it should be company policy for us to wear green every day this entire week leading up to St. Paddy's Day. He's got his little green pointy shoes on, (laughs) his little green hat. How much do you pay that guy? Uh, Well, (laughs) see, hey, you know what? It's a a tough deal. Tough to dig here. Rick Everett, Greg Steckline hanging out in the studio. I have, uh, and I've been teasing this, it's time for you to fill out your bracket. And I have the winning bracket right here. This is it. This is the dominating bracket. That, Let me see it. That uh, everybody Did needs you know to be able to, you know you had a bracketologist that's posing right. as a political analyst <laughs> here? See, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> see, it is the ultimate bracket. You get an opportunity to fill out your bracket. Uh, uh, 11 o'clock is the deadline tomorrow. Really get in as soon as you can. Fill out the bracket. And all of our participating sponsors will run through those again for you. But uh, fill out your bracket. It's a lot of fun. Really one of the only places you can get a paper bracket and your chance to win $250 from Tad's at Locker and with KQM KGSO. Your black bracket blew up third, the third game in. What? No. You've got Arizona beating Virginia. Yeah. It's, no it's way. It's going to be an upset. It's no. going to be the great upset. Hey, Virginia is 31 and 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Check, check, please. They're, they're, going, they're going to be starstruck by the tournament, and they're oh, going to be gosh. upset, and they're going to lose. They're pretty stout. Although, you know, Cincinnati's pretty stout. You know what? I don't like the way KU's played some of these games. They've been struggling a little well, bit. Well, it's up and down. Yeah. It's up and down. Yeah. Although they did play really, really well in the Big 12 tournament. This is coming from the guy who knows all about basketball here. And, which, yeah. and Wichita <laughs> State, you know, they've got a tough one against West Virginia because uh, you never know how they're going to play. Uh, Bob Huggins, he's a – Bobby, he's a heck of a coach, but – his players, it's, someday they play good and someday they don't. So sometimes it's, they don't. It's flip of the coin. Now, i got to ask you this because uh, being in Wichita here with the tournament, San Diego State is going to be coming to Wichita for the tournament that's here. And we talked about it a little bit earlier, but the fact that the state of California banned state-funded travel to Kansas along with about nine other states – uh, I find quite ironic. Now, you know, I forgot looking, about that. See, the one thing he focuses on, the one thing <laughs> he that he can the pull out, out of everything, yeah, the, the, the one <laughs> thing that hey. he can pull out of the NCAA tournament has it's, to be political. It has to be political. Oh, so, but, you know God. what? That's right. I never thought, well, you know what is... Uh, so they're getting. Do- they have a foundation at the university that's well, private donations. A lot of a lot of colleges do. But well, that's on. what say so is. Isn't that's a that private the most organization. I don't think that's thing a... in the world. I mean, come on. We're not going to use it with your state funded taxpayer dollars. We're going to do it from the private donation. So if the if the people wanted them to travel to Kansas for the tournament anyways by private donations, isn't it hypocritical for their government to say you're not allowed to do it through our, through your taxpayer money? You just got to donate on it private. You know what? Money. Well, the, that's their it, problem. It is their problem. Yeah, but it's ironic. Yeah. But almost every almost every university has a foundation well, sure they do and i i, I don't know yeah. think i don't think wichita state say so that's a that's the that's i think that's a school organization isn't it yeah, i think so i'm not sure so. of all the political ins and outs of wichita yeah. state funding but i'm sure they've got a foundation well i know for a fact that the the baseball team the the uh, uh field was on donated to them on private land and that's sure. why they've been able to build to uh, sell beer Okay. At the at the baseball game. It's owned by private property. It was, of- and maybe it's a foundation now. I'm not sure of the ownership of it, but I do know that it isn't owned by the by the state. Sure. 
Um, it's just ironic. You know, we had the, the general funds for the university, and then we had the private foundation donations, and they had to use that to be able to travel to Kansas for yeah, a basketball that, that tournament. That is odd. Now, let me give you a little sidebar to that story. Since San Diego State University is coming to Wichita, and Wichita is actually going to San Diego to play, they've made a little Ooh. deal, or they're going to California to play, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they made a deal that the Wichita Shocker fans that are here are going to cheer for San Diego State and and well, vice I guess versa. that's all right. Yeah. So, uh, as long be. as it's San Diego State, the college, the and not college. the California, the all yeah, ball. Yeah, California yeah, yeah. Cation, yeah. baby. <laughs> Got to take a bottle of the hour break. Great sec line, Rick Everett here at Basketball Tournaments. Get your bracket filled out before 11 o'clock tomorrow. Get it in there. Get your chance to win $250 from Tad's Locker Room. Back after this. Taxes go up, so do our tempers. Oh my God, no! Fighting for Kansans every day. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Uh, welcome back into the Voice of Reason, making it happen today. It is a Wednesday, wrapping up the show, and it's open lines to you. Up to free for all for the last half hour. Whatever's on your mind, you're more than welcome to chime in and talk about something maybe we've talked about or not talked about today. Because we're just. Have a little fun today. What do you say? 316-721-8255. 316-721-TALK if you want to join in. I do. I saw the headline. The Washington Post. Pennsylvania vote shows that Trumpism has its limits even in Trump country. Oh, yeah. Yeah, It's it's got its limits there. The Trumpism is dying off. The blue wave is flooding the nation. We are now going to be a Democrat run, a Democratic run when it comes to the majority in both chambers. This next election, Democrats are going to be winning across the board. It's going to be huge for them, right? It's going to be huge for them. Do you really believe that? Do you really think that they're going to do you really think they're going to get that excited? Probably not. Do you really think that they're going to get that pumped up? We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay! Yeah, no. See, I don't see it. I don't see it. The election last night in Pennsylvania, the Democrat Connor Lamb ends up winning over Rick Saccone, the Republican, by six to seven hundred votes. They are contesting that. Obviously, it's too close to call. One hundred and thirteen thousand seven twenty for Connor Lamb. Rick Saccone at one hundred and thirteen thousand seventy nine. A forty nine point eight percent to forty nine point six percent. Now, here's the interesting part. Libertarians. All of you third party candidates, listen up. Drew Miller, the Libertarian candidate for this Pennsylvania race, got 0.6% of the vote and 1,378 votes. Now, if you're a Libertarian and you believe in limited government, you believe in less taxes, you believe in actually doing what's right for the private property and for the capitalist individual, who do you think was going to win that race? Who do you think was going to win? Republican, Democrat, doesn't really matter. Maybe you don't like both of them because you're not a two-party person. You're fighting the system, man. Which one do you more closely align with on an ideological front, Republican or a Democrat, predominantly? Obviously, you have your issues with both parties, which is why you would vote Libertarian. But 1,378 votes went towards the Libertarian with a 0.6%. Yeah, a big chance in hell actually winning that race, right? Way to go, Libertarians. You have ruined the election to have someone who you least fall in line with to actually win because you're too stubborn to actually get on board and actually change the Republican Party within, but to actually go third party. You have lost the election for someone who can actually do something productive that's more aligned with your ideology. Well done. Well done. This is the exact argument, which is why I say in the general election, party trumps person. When you want someone with a proper platform with a proper moral compass with someone who actually stands on principle you vote for them in the primary race you get involved in the party if you don't like what the party is doing then you change the party from within you are the activist you are the engaged individual you're the one that actually can make a difference within the party leaving and going third party you just got someone in who you despise even more so than the other person the worst of your two evils to actually get in because you cost the election for the republican 
And I would assume that predominantly the libertarian would most likely fall in line with more Republican values than it would the Democrats, because Democrats obviously like socialism at this time. That's the plan. Now, they say that Connor Lamb's a moderate Democrat. I call shenanigans and malarkey on that one. They're trying to calm it down. See, this is the play that the media is going to have on this. Number one is that it's going to be the wave of the blue coming in because they beat them in a predominantly red Republican district. Yeah, it is a predominantly red Republican district. The last two elections, it was un- uh, uncontested with no Democrat even in the race in any way, shape, or form. The problem is that with this is the fault is that back in 2012 when there was a Democrat, they got more votes on that one in a general election than they did on this one. They had 122,000 votes back in 2012 during the general election, and they only got 36% of the vote. The fact is, Republicans just didn't show up to this race. Republicans didn't show up. The uncontested race two years ago had almost 300,000 voter turnouts for the Republican. They had 113,000 this time. During the 2012 election, when there was actually a contestant against a Republican and Democrat going against one another, the Democrat received 122,000. The Republican received almost two, uh, almost what was it, 220,000, 230,000. They didn't show up this time. Half of them showed up than they did back in 2012 to be able to beat a Democrat. They just didn't show up. It was a special election. The voter numbers are really down. It's kind of the same example of what we saw here in the 4th Congressional District for our special election when we still beat the Democrat with a seven-point margin, and we did it with the Republicans not even showing up to the voting booth. The Democrats, though, cashing in their ticket. They're at the gambling table. They're sitting there playing cards. They're gambling. They're almost out of tickets. They're almost out of chips. They don't know what to do. They're throwing it in, hopefully being able to win some more by bluffing. And if they can sink all their resources into a race like this to really prove that they have the wave coming with the lack of voter turnout that the Democrats had, with the lack of activism that they actually saw with people not showing up to the voting booth, with even less people showing up than they saw eight years ago or six years ago. Less people than then, but now this is going to be the big wave, right? Now this is going to be the epitome. They're hoping this is the stone throwing into the lake for the ripple effect to have in the rest of the nation. The problem is it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. The Democrats are going to lose across the nation. They're not going to gain very many seats. They gained one whoop de doo They sunk every resource they had into that one to try and prove that point into a deep red district. And all the libertarians that like to vote third party, all the independents that like to vote third party, they like to go away from the two-party system. Anybody in that 18th congressional district in Pennsylvania, you lost them that election. You. Not you here in Kansas, but you. Those third-party voters, I've never understood the idea of third-party. How do you think that you're even going to have a chance of winning when you get six up uh, 0.6% of the vote? They received 113,000, you received 1,000. They received 113,000, you received 1,300. That's it. Libertarians, independents, third-party candidates do not win elections. The parties, whether we like it or not, we have a two-party system. We have to acknowledge that fact. We may not like it, but that is the fact of the matter. That is the truth of what actually goes on in our governmental system. We have a two-party system. The only way that we will have voices is if the libertarians come back on board with the Republicans, the conservatives, the libertarians unite under principles, under limited government, under smaller government, under less regulation, then we can bicker about the social issues. The social issues are a bystander. The social issues are a benefit, are just uh, something down the road. We're not going to have an opportunity to bicker about social issues on marijuana or on gay marriage if we don't have an economy that actually allows us to live the way we need to, if we don't have any bit of private property any longer, if we don't actually abide by the Constitution when it comes to freedom of expression or freedom of the Second Amendment or freedom of the government itself. We're not going to have an opportunity at all to actually bicker about what kind of pot that you're allowed to grow in your home. That's irrelevant to the big bigger picture. It's peons. It's the pennies into the it's it's pennies underneath the couch cushion is what that actually is. Libertarians. I've been calling for this and advocating for this for the longest time. Libertarians get back on board with the Republican Party. Yes, I know the Republicans shunned you. And I apologize for that. Yes, I know the establishment Republicans, the mainstream establishment that really has no difference between them and the Democrats themselves, between ideological progressivism and ideological conservatism. They don't see that. They see about staying in power and having their special interests get money as opposed to the Democrats' special interests get money. I understand that we're fighting the same fight. 
conservatives. Let's unite with the libertarians. Libertarians get back on board because the Republicans should have won that race. The Republicans could have won that race. But we had 1,300 people that showed up and said, hey, you know what? We're just going to shake it up and we're going to vote because I stood on principle and I'm going to run myself off the cliff with my flag held high and I'm going to feel really good about that. And guess what? Now you have a Democrat and that's going to vote for more Bernie Sanders-like principles as opposed to more less government-regulated, maybe Ted Cruz principles and lowering taxes, doing another tax break. Libertarians, you like tax breaks, right? Because you don't believe in any taxes. If you're a diehard libertarian, you think all taxes are theft. So why would we agree with having a Democrat in power that wants to have universal health care, that wants to have free colleges, that wants to have the, the idea to pay the, or make the rich pay their fair share even more so than what they're already doing? Why would you agree to have a Democrat in there as opposed to a Republican that believes in limited taxes? There's a big difference there, isn't there, as a libertarian? It's someone who believes in no taxes because taxes are theft and agreeing with either someone who believes in limited taxes and someone that just says, let's raise taxes on everybody. Which one, if you had that choice, would you choose? I don't choose either because I'm going to stand on principle and I'm going to vote my, I'm going to stand and really feel good about my vote as a libertarian. Guess what? The Republican lost by 700 votes. You had 1,300 of them go to the Libertarian that could have won that election to be marginally better and more in line with your ideology, but we stood on principle. How do you feel about that? I want to hear from, I know we have some Libertarians that listen to the show, and I'm really curious to get your thoughts on this. 316-721-8255, because in my opinion, they shot themselves in the foot right there. And now, I mean, many individuals that are, not everybody, but many individuals that have that more Libertarian aspect to them that vote third party like that, they don't care. They think that it's just one or the other. It's either it's both of them are bad, so either one of them is going to uh, going to mess with me in the end, and it doesn't matter because both of them are evil and both will do bad things, so it doesn't really matter which one gets in. And if you believe that way, then I'm sorry because I think a tax reform of lowering taxes, maybe not eliminating taxes, but lowering the taxes is way better than having higher taxes. To me, there is a gray area in there to where lower taxes are way better than higher taxes because the libertarian dreamland of no taxes will never happen. I hate to break it to some individuals, but it will never happen. So what do we do? We try and find the lesser of two evils. That's what politics is. And anybody who's been involved in politics understands that. Voting third party destroys elections. And Pennsylvania's a perfect prime example of that. 316-728-255. Let's go and take a break. Wrapping up hour number three. I want to get your thoughts and calls on that, especially from some of you who may believe. And look, I'm not going to rip you on here. I just want to understand. I want to understand why it would be okay to still vote third party and see the more, the worser of two evils get in as opposed to the lesser of two evils because we just want to stay on our principle that much and see it go the opposite direction. So that way we can just have something to complain about. We have something to whine about? I don't know. I mean, I don't like playing the victim here, but maybe that's what it is. That way we can continue to say, oh, it's still terrible. It's got awful. It's terrible. We need to get third party and we can push even harder so you can get 0.8% of the votes. I don't know if that's productivity. 316 2855 47 minutes past the hour. This is The Voice of Reason. The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Back into the voice of reason, wrapping up the show today. Appreciate you hanging out with us. There it is, my venting of the day. <laughs> I get so frustrated when people say, I want to stand on principle and see nothing get done. It bugs me. I just don't understand it. it doesn't if you want to do something, look, I'm a productive kind of guy. I want to get something done. I want to see an end goal. And if I have to do it marginally and do it by steps and baby steps, look, that's what I'm gonna do. When you're in a career. Let's say that you're a farmer or a banker or you're whatever. Can you get from point A to point B just like that and be the CEO of the company? Maybe you can own your own farm, obviously. But can you automatically expand from maybe 800 acres to 20,000 acres? Can you do that automatically just like that? Maybe you've got the money. But very few times you have to work your way up, right? You increase. You do it in baby steps. 
You buy another couple hundred acres here, you start working it, and you start seeing the profit come in from it, start expanding, buying another. If you're a banker, you start off as a teller, and you start learning the product, start talking to the clients and the customers that come in as they deposit their checks. Then you start working your way up, and you become a personal banker, and you start making the sales and opening accounts and refinancing mortgages, whatever you end up doing. Then you work your way up to become a, a branch manager, and then you go up, you work your way up. It's the process. You do that in life every day. Do you get all or nothing when you debate with your spouse and say, honey, I'm laying down the law. You ain't going to go get no new pair of shoes. Mm -mm, Ain't going to happen. But my shoes broke. Nope, ain't going to get them. (laughs) Try that. Go home and try that tonight. See how that works out for you. It doesn't. You have to do it in baby steps. Okay, honey, you know, the shoes broke. Can't really afford it right now. Let's get you a cheap pair of shoes, and then guess what? When I get my next paycheck or for the anniversary coming up in a couple months, I will buy you the most beautiful shoes you ever saw. It was amazing. They'll be beautiful shoes, and it'll be the greatest shoes you ever had, and you'll be tired of wearing those shoes because they're going to be so great. That's the baby stuff you have to do. In politics, you cannot stand on a platform and say, I want everything or I want nothing at all. I want everything or we're all going to be falling off the cliff. And if I don't get everything, then I'm going to whine and I'm going to throw a fit about it and then I'm going to pl- complain about how the rest of the world's terrible. That's not productive. As you know on the show, I am not one that likes to hear about whining or complaining. I hate the idea of men- the mentality of victimhood. I don't like it. It bothers me a lot. Let's be productive. We have a really, really loud voice that legislators listen to. Especially in Kansas. We got 1.8 million registered voters in the state. That means that the districts are relatively small and every vote counts. Every voice means something. And when you call up your state legislature, they listen because there's not very many other people that are actually doing it. And when you actually vote, if it's within a couple hundred and the libertarian third party candidate, whatever gets a uh, gets a couple hundred, guess what? That threw the election. And I again ask the question. On a scale Which one is a little bit closer in line with you? I know how it works with the libertarians. The libertarians are saying, oh, the Republican, yeah, you know what? They vote for the lesser taxes most of the time. Usually they vote for the less spending. Sometimes maybe not, or they complain about the fact that Republicans are spending just as much. But they're talking about a sect of the Republican Party, not all of it. All the Republicans ran us out of the club. We're not welcome there anymore. The Ron Paul libertarians are not welcome in the Republican Party any longer. I get it. I get it. But if you side with the right kind of Republicans, conservative Republicans that do believe in constitutionalism, private property, capitalism, less government, less taxes, yada, 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 guess what? You can unite forces and actually change. Or I know what they say, though. The Republicans, oh, they're terrible on social issues. We like the marijuana issue. We like the LGBT community. We like this. We like that. And we're going to support that stuff because they need to be protected classes. And we need to we need to make it a free for us, the lovey-dovey, hold hands and sing kumbaya kind of thing. And for that, they relate more to the progressive Democrats. And they're torn. It's that tug of war. And it really comes down to what issue is more important to them. Is it the limited government and private property or is it the social issues? And I'm not saying all those votes, if they wouldn't have gone to the Libertarian in Pennsylvania, would have gone to the Republican, but I would say probably 80% of them would have if they would have voted commonsensically, if they would have voted for one of the parties that actually had a chance of winning. And then we fix the party from within. It's the baby steps. No, you're not going to get to a 0% sales tax on food all right off, right off the bat. We have one of the highest sales tax rates in the state of Kansas for food. We're not going to be able to go to zero just like that. We support a 1% reduction, a 2% reduction. We wait another year. We let the we let the economy kind of uh, reset itself to where it finds that revenue elsewhere if they want to spend, or we figure out how to compensate for that spending. And then guess what? Then we present another bill and we start lowering it a little bit more. Then people don't have the shock factor. The economy doesn't have the shock factor. And then we do well. Everything in politics is baby steps and chipping away. The progressives have done it since FDR, which is why they right now have con- complete control of society when it comes to the economy, when it comes to social programs, when it comes to the fourth bureau, the fourth branch of government and the bureaucratic state, they have complete and utter control. And we're finally starting to wake up and realize that we can start chipping away at it little by little, too, instead of saying, we want it all gone right now or else we're going to stand right here and say we want it all right now or uh, it doesn't work that way. I'm just as conservative as anybody And I have my libertarian flavors to me, but I'm reasonable in understanding that we have to do it in a process and in steps. And we can do that 
together because our voice is heard every every day here on The Voice Reason. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.